excited. I'm so, so <laughs> excited. Everybody did pass. Guys, this stuff. Hey, nah, that's y'all hard work. That's y'all hard work. I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of you guys. That's so awesome. This chapter right here, guys, Sound Beans. I sent you guys my my version I did last year, my Halloween version. You know, I, uh, I told you I'm making all my PowerPoints similar, you know, because I actually made a video on this one already. Um, making all of them similar so they can match. Make them all match, okay? So last, last year when I was first starting, I used to have a theme for every single PowerPoint. Every single one of them had like a theme to it. Y'all got my Kobe theme one. It was my Halloween theme one. The next one, it was a, a Thanksgiving theme one, but it's gonna be like this. Any Christmas team? I can uh, help with that. We're not here for Christmas. We're Before that, right? Nah, we, we get out of school like the first week of December. Right, I'm telling you, if you, don't, if you haven't missed any days, then you out of school for the first week of December. Alright guys, again, if you're taking notes, take them just like this. This is how I would divide this chapter up into four sections. In the four sections, alright? I'm going to try, you know I'm, I'm going to simplify it. I know it's what, 15 pages of information? You know, I have a lot of slides right here, like 40 slides, but when it comes to information on the board, we're going to keep it simple. Man, let's talk about these objectives, alright? No, so, no motivation? No motivation. Nah, I'm sorry. I do have motivation, but I'm already started now. I'm already started now. What's my, what's my usual Monday motivation when I don't have one? We all woke up this morning. It's a blessing. Hell we yeah. all, all got to be grateful. All right? So this chapter right here, guys, we're going to discuss the shape and the anatomy of the sound beam. Remember I told you guys it's kind of hourglass shaped. Now we're going to talk about why does it have that hourglass shape to the beam. All right? Okay. And it's something y'all already learned about. Y'all already know about constructive and destructive interference. It has a lot to do with the shape right there. Okay. We're going to determine, how, we're going to elaborate on and discuss how to determine the focal depth and the sound beam divergence. Beam divergence, okay? As the beam spreads out. Okay. First, the beam right here, guys, you see it converges. It comes to like a smaller point. Then it's going to diverge and, get into, and make itself bigger. Okay. We're going to talk about the relationship between um, the focal depth, sound beam divergence, <coughs> and transducer diameter and frequency. All right, and then we're going to discuss spherical waves and Hewins principle. Am I saying that right, guys? Hewins. Hewins. Who's in? Who's in? I'm, I'm principle. guessing it's a French. It's a French. No, no French speakers in here. No French speakers in here. Hewins. Hewins. For the sake of this class, it's Hewins. Okay. <laughs> Hewins. All right. Hewins. Hmm. It is today. <laughs> Let's talk about the shape and anatomy of a sound beam, guys. Shape and anatomy of the sound beam. It's all bloody. All right. So, again, guys, just like everything else we've been doing, you know, we when we scan with our ultrasound transducers, they are not single crystal um, PZT elements within our transducers. Okay. But for the ease of understanding, we're going to talk about this from the aspect of a single disc-shaped, unfocused PZT crystal. Because back in the days before you could actually adjust that focus, the focus used to be standard, okay? It used to be a, whatever, you know, it used to be only related to the the, the, tra the transducer diameter and the frequency, okay? So we're gonna talk about it from that aspect because you can also apply that to phased array transducers, which means they have multiple elements, okay? All right? So the, again, the active element in diagnostic ultrasound is not typically uh, the shape of a disc, okay? It's usually the shape of the transducer face itself, okay? The scan head itself, all right? So even on, like you have that linear, it's usually a whole bunch of rectangles that's lined up across that linear probe, okay? Nevertheless, the description provides base information for understanding the shape and behavior of sound beams in clinical imaging, okay guys? So for the purpose of this conversation, we're talking about single, disc-shaped, unfocused PZT crystals, okay? So one element, one active element, okay? Even though we know in a regular ultrasound transducer, there's hundreds of active elements in our one transducer, all right? So, um, as sound travels, the width of the beam changes, guys. You see right here, this is our, you see our hourglass shaped beam? We're looking at this beam in actual profile because when we look at it straight on, it's actually shaped like this. It's, it's, a, it's, circular, it's circular shape, so when you look on it, from this angle, like I'm looking right in front of the beam, it's shaped like a circle, guys. It's shaped like a circle, okay? But we're looking at it in profile, our lateral view of this beam. So it has this hourglass appearance in our profile view. Okay? Y'all seen those profile views of those babies? 
right? Aren't y'all doing yeah. those? Mm -hmm. So you know that's like our this this view right here. That's how we're looking at this ultrasound beam in a lateral view. So in this profile view, we're talking about the width of the beam, right? So remember I said the width of the beam has everything to do with determining our lateral resolution. Okay. What determines our axial resolution, eh? What determines our axial resolution? What determines our, our axial resolution? When? What determines our axial resolution? Ooh, y'all need to give y'all a retest. <laughs> somebody, somebody help me. What determines our axial resolution? To me, spatial pulse length, guys. Spatial pulse length determines our axial resolution. Okay, our lateral resolution is determined by the width of the beam. So just looking at the shape of this beam, that means our lateral resolution is going to change over the distance traveled. Correct. Okay, because our, our beam changes shape over, over distance, right? So our lateral resolution is also going to change as that beam shape is changing. Okay? We're going to have better lateral resolution at the focus. That's the whole purpose of you guys moving the focus, right? Okay, because we were trying to provide the best actual, uh, be best lateral resolution possible. Remember, I said that we have two structures that are that are wider than the width of the beam. So this is my beam right here. It's my beam, and if I have a structure right here and a structure right here, the ultrasound system is not going to identify those structures as being individual structures, right? It's going to identify these structures as one thing, okay? But if I have two structures and they fit within this beam, that means the ultrasound system is going to identify those two structures as two separate objects, right? Okay? So the width of the beam determines our lateral resolution. Our lateral resolution deals with anything. That is perpendicular to the to the uh, direction that the beam travels. Okay, actual resolution anything that's parallel to the to the way that the beam travels. Okay, actual resolution guys, parallel, lateral resolution perpendicular to the beam. It's perpendicular, right? Because these two structures are hitting this beam at ninety degrees, right? Mm -hmm. Those two structures are ninety degrees to the beam. Okay, that's perpendicular incidence. Okay. I'm telling you, it's not gonna say it in the book. We haven't. That's the next chapter. Actually, that's chapter ten where we lateral. talk about axial and lateral resolution. I'm just trying to get your head up so you understand why this matters, why this profile view matters. Okay. So, at the starting point, the beam width is exactly the same as the transducer diameter. Whatever the diameter of that transducer, okay, that's the same size that the beam is gonna come out. Okay, immediately exiting that. Um, the transducer, okay? The beam narrows like a funnel until it reaches the smallest diameter. Smaller diameter is right here, guys. The focus point. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be our focus right there. When we're adjusting it, we're actually changing the shape of the beam. When you're moving your focus up and down, you're changing the shape of the beam, okay? So we're gonna get our best images, guys. Our best images are gonna be in this space right here before the beam starts to diverge. Okay. Okay. That's why I always want you to put your focus on the posterior border of the anatomy, because I want most of, I want all of my imaging to come from the near field, okay. not the far field. I want it to be as the beam is converging, not diverging, getting wider. Okay. You had a question, Dewey? No, no. I, I, I oh. want to say like that rubber focus up. Yeah, the way it, talking, yeah. It, it, yeah, it depends. Wherever, wherever, I, wherever the anatomy is, I always want the beam, the focus to be posterior border of that anatomy. Okay. Then the beam expands or diverges, guys. The beam expands or diverges. It means it's, it's getting bigger, okay? So it goes from converging into one, uh, to the focus, and then it's gonna diverge and get bigger, okay? What goes in there, Mark? Good stuff, good stuff. Beam created by, okay? And this is also, we're talking about continuous sound just for the sake of understanding how this beam works. Any questions on the shape of the beam? Hourglass shape, guys. Anybody ask you what's the shape of the ultrasound beam? What, Hourglass shape. What makes that curve? What, what makes the that? curve? We're going to talk about that when we talk about Hewlett's principle oh, okay. and why that happens because of destructive and constructive interference. Okay. All right. So this is our anatomy of the sound beam, guys. Our anatomy of the sound beam. First, we're going to talk about the focus 
what this black line represents right here, guys, that's gonna represent our focus. That's what the that's the narrowest part of the beam, right there, okay? Then we're gonna talk about the near zone. The near zone is from the transducer to the focus, okay? Where the beam is the whole area where the beam is converging. Okay? Then we're gonna talk about the focal length, near zone length, or focal depth. That has three terms. That's gonna be the distance from the transducer to the center of the focus. To the focus, okay? The, the near zone and focal near zone length look the same, okay? Far zone, that's gonna be from the focus to, to, the, to the far field as the beam is diverging or spreading out, okay? I'm gonna elaborate on these in a little bit, guys, okay? And then we have the focal zone. The focal zone right here, guys, you see it consists of both the near zone and the far zone, okay? It just des describes where the beam is relatively narrow, okay? We're gonna get our best lateral resolution in the focal zone. You know how you can change the, the size of your focal zone, guys? You know when mm -hmm. you click your focal button and you can make make it expand or get smaller? That's what you're doing. You're changing the, the size of the focal zone when you do that, okay? Whenever you make, because I know you, you'll start seeing a lot of text do that. I'm starting to see a lot of my seniors, they're just expanding the focal zone, but they're not bringing the focus all the way down. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that, I will take off for that. Expand the focal zone? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can change when you press on the foc when you turn in your focus when you push that button out because it's a dual function button when you push it down you can change the size the of the zone. focus the focal zone so instead of it being like usually that's our focus right there then it has like boom boom that's our this right here from here to here that's our focal zone but you can change this make this longer and you can change the size of your focal zone. When you push that button down, when you put your focus, push your focus button down, you can change the size of that focus. And you don't want us to do that because what? Because I really want the focus to be, I want all, most of my image to be in the near field. If you're expanding the focal zone, you're also making making the, the, the far zone even wider. Even though the beam is still relatively narrow, now we're getting a lot, a lot of image as the beam is diverging, okay? I want, more, I want majority of my image where the beam is converging, okay? Because as you will talk about it, as the beam diverges, we're starting to lose um, lateral resolution. Lateral, lateral resolution. Um, okay. So I see I see people do that. They'll do this right here. They'll have that image right there. This is my my uh, and they have that liver like this, just to cover this whole area. They'll have it like this instead of bringing it. So you see the focus is in the middle of the anatomy, right? If this is my my liver. The focus is in the middle of the anatomy instead of having it down. You also notice how when you adjust your focus, how that changes the overall gain of your image. If you have your focus in the middle, then you'll have a really light image at the top and it'll be dark on the bottom. But if you move your focus down, it'll even the gain out for you, okay? To me, don't do that, guys, that's cheating. So what they do, what they make the focus zone ad uh, adjusted for? The technologies, because you gotta work with the technologies more than you work with me. So you're gonna pick up those habits of what the tech is doing because you're with them all the time. You're with them all day long. So it's easy to forget what we teach you here, even though what we're teaching you is the right way. Right. When you see everybody do something, of course you're gonna be like, I'm gonna do it like this. <laughs> Would anybody do that? No. So definitely, bring your focus down on your image. Right? <laughs> so just don't do it. Yeah, don't do that, don't do that. All right guys, so as I have represented right here on our on our image, let's go ahead and label these. I'm gonna write our, our little definition. So we have our number one right here, guys. Everybody can see our number one. Represent our, our line right here. Represent our black line right here, guys. That's gonna be our focus, okay? Number one, that's our, our focus. focus. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, number two, number two, guys, number two is going to represent from the from the transducer near zone all the way to the focus, guys. That's going to be our near zone. Okay, it's a it's a synonym for the near zone as well. Okay, that's going to be our near zone. It's important. It's super important that you know these synonyms. That's going to be our near zone right there. Then we have number three, guys. I did it in a dotted line because the near zone and number three. They basically, if we, if I was to plot them on this image, they're gonna look exactly the same, okay? But our near zone is an area, okay? And our focal length, our near zone length, or our focal depth 
is a distance. Okay, so I'm gonna just put initials right here, guys. NGL, focal depth, and focal length. Okay. It has, it's three synonyms for the near zone length. Okay, number four, guys. Right here, you see it represent where the beam from the focus to where the beam is diverging. It's gonna be our far zone, guys. It's gonna be our far zone right there. And finally, we have number five. You see, I have these little dotted spaces where the beam is relatively narrow. Okay, it's no exact numbers for where the, where the beam is narrow, but that's gonna represent, guys, our focal zone. That's gonna represent our focal zone. Okay. Remember, the focus is in the middle of the focal zone. Right there, right there. All right, guys, so let's start describing it. So here's our image right here that we just labeled. Okay, right? Same image. Same image. Sorry about it being a little slanted. I took the picture. I guess it wasn't perfect. Okay. So right here, guys, again, in the middle, our number one, we have our focus where the beam is narrowest. The focus is a point. Okay? The focus is a point. Okay? Right here where our beam is narrowest, right there. Okay? Number two, guys, we have our near zone which is the area from the transducer to the focus, okay? Near zone. Number three, we have our near zone link, our focal link, or our focal depth. It's also the distance from the transducer to the, to the focus, okay? That's why I have it in the same place, represent the same thing. Remember, the near zone, that's an area, the NZL, that's a distance. Oh, okay. That's the key thing to remember. But they're the same. They look the same. They look the same. Just like, um, just like wavelength and period, right? They look the same. One right? time, so one is distance. You have to know, one is time and one is distance. Same thing here. You have to know the near zone is an area. The, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, near zone is an area. Near zone length, focal depth. Focal length is a distance. I think they just read each other. Huh? I think they just read each other. <laughs> On what? Near zone length. Yeah. For the near zone, to describe the near zone? Yeah, they use region on there. Region, area. <laughs> have, it, or have you want to remember, Pat, I'm good with that. Just know the difference is one is distance and one is an area or region, okay? Then we have number four, guys, our far zone, which is from the focus to the, to the far zone as the beam diverges, as the beam spreads out and gets wider, okay? Then we have our focal zone, number five, guys. You see the focal zone again, is some of it's in the near zone, some of it's in the far zone, okay? It's where the beam is relatively narrow. All right? Great, let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about, guys, our focus or our focal point. 